Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Live Wire on Inside UNC Charlotte and our new day and time for this academic year. Thank you for putting us on our on your screens today, and we have a special guest today, uh, Jeff Baker, our chief of campus police and public safety. And uh, Jeff, thank you for being with us, and we want to encourage. Um, all of you who are watching right now um, to send us your questions uh, for the chief. Um, we're fortunate to have you here for the next oh, roughly half hour or so and in that time I'd like to uh, get in as many uh, questions as we can and hopefully some from our audience as well. Um, and I guess the topic that is on uh, the minds of most people today is uh, we had, a, we had a sporting event this past weekend that involved a little bit of preparation and a little bit of wondering what it would be like. Well, actually a ton of those. And, and in the end, it seemed like things went pretty well for our first ever football game with a near, well, an overcapacity crowd and a lot of people on campus. It was, it was a pretty good day, wasn't it? It was, it was a wonderful event. And um, you know, it's something we've been planning for many years probably close to three years. We've been working on the security plan and the traffic plan and things of that nature and what to expect and the impact on the community that surrounds the university as well. And uh, you know, it, it couldn't have gone any better. Um, I enjoy athletics and I attend quite a few football games throughout a year. And uh, I've got to say that our students, our fans, everybody just, they were wonderful. And <clears throat> the event just went well. Yeah, I, I think one of, one of the visuals that I took away was having to have a chance to walk around really from the student tailgating area, East Deck, all the way across campus, seeing um, lots and lots of people who you could tell by looking at them, they haven't been here before. And this was an opportunity for them to really take a few minutes and enjoy being on this um, large, very well designed, well thought out campus and really enjoy it. Um, what were your main questions or concerns? And as you said, you know, months, even more than a year of preparation for that day. But what, what Friday night when you went to bed were you thinking, well, I hope this one, this is, this is the one spot I hope really works or was there one spot where you maybe even had some doubt or concern going in? Well, you know, you always, I always worry because of my position. I worry about our students, of course, and our staff and faculty as well. And, um, you know, you, you think about all the sporting events we have in, in America, and then you realize exactly what you're going to have and what can impact that. And, you know, generally what I do is I just worry about safety. And I just want, I, what I do is just hope that we're gonna be as safe as possible and, and still have a lot of fun because that's important too. And uh, you know, that we had that. Uh, my officers and I, we circulated throughout the entire campus. We're, we were always present at all the different tailgate areas. And uh, we saw students, alums, friends, you name it, having a great time building up to the game. I know we had uh, some political figures. In fact, um, one of the highest magnitude here in this state was here and, and with him came a security detail and uh, you had some CMPD um, officers on campus as well and then how many um, from our own uh, university police force were out and on the job that day? We had uh, approximately 18 of our UNC Charlotte officers and 25 CMPD officers. Uh, yeah we did, we had the governor and the lieutenant governor here and I you know, that in and of itself was wonderful. And um, that went well. And they have a security detail that travels with them, of course. And, um, you know, everything, everything from that end of it was, again, just uh, you couldn't ask for anything better. I mean, yeah. it was a little warm. So we did have a concern about that. We always will. Our first few games every season are going to be warm, you know, and we worry about people hydrating and things like that because yeah. it, can, it can hit you real quick. Did we have any serious incidents? I wasn't aware of any. But well, we didn't have any serious incidents, yeah. but we had a series of folks that, you know, they, they became overheated yeah. and, you know, they needed some water and things of that nature. So our, um, our, e our, our medic folks, they were, they were fairly busy, you know, at first working through that. 
nothing serious, but there again, you know, it's you get out in the heat and you're having a lot of fun and you may not pay attention to that you should drink some water, that kind of thing. So it was a great it was a great first time and I think uh did we did we learn anything that we're carrying forward to the next home game and beyond and any surprises at all? Well, from a safety and security standpoint, you know, I like to say we can always do better. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's got to be something that we can do to improve our service to the community and that kind of thing. So that that we started that today at 11 o'clock. You know, we had our um, early briefing so we could begin talking about Saturday. You know, what can we do? Where where are our points where we maybe need um, better traffic control or things of that nature. So that's something we're working on right now and collaborating with uh, CMPD on. And uh, you know, we're, we're ready for Saturday. Our guest on the live wire is Chief Jeff Baker and we're uh, very glad you're with us uh, here, oh, in my the, pleasure. here in the studio and glad you're with us uh, wherever you may be on your mobile device or at your desk. And uh, we are speaking not only with our own Chief Baker but also um, the the chief director uh, the chief uh, identified by campus safety magazine as the director of the year for university police forces and that's a that's a great um, honor for you so first of all congratulations but thank you i know you and it's not it's not jeff baker's award i'm pretty sure it's it's the uh, the forces award. it it is yeah. it it has everything to do with our police department and um I happen to be the benefactor of this, but really it's, it's the UNC Charlotte Police Department, a uh, department that I couldn't be more proud of. Um, a group of officers that really strive and understand the importance of two, two things. Um, one is keeping our students safe, and two, eradicating crime. We know you're there because we see the cars, we see officers, we see officers on foot patrol, we see officers on those devices that aren't quite segways, but they're they look Three even wheels. even more stable than that. Yeah, um, a lot more stable. Yeah, what, take us through the the basics of the of the officers here in numbers and what how they break out in in uh, the organizational structure of your department and and the maybe this the scope of of the work. Sure, um, we've got approximately fifty officers. And, um, is that I, is that the right ratio for a university our size? Um, well, you know, as we grow, so does a police department. Yeah. Just just the same as a municipality. Um, you know, the police department I used to work for, of course, CMPD. When I went there in 1980, they had 680 officers, and today they have 1,900. And the city has grown, sure. you know, unbelievably. So you want to make sure that your ratios are commensurate with growth. But um, we have approximately 50 officers. We have, um, you know, four lieutenants. We have a captain. We have a deputy director that uh, brings a wealth of information to our community. He's a retired chief of police. And um, we have community policing coordinators, officers that are specifically tasked to work and immerse themselves within the campus community and have done a, a superb job with that. And at the same time, you have to have balance with officers that respond to calls for service and things of that nature because we have that element in what we do as well. So that's how, how we find the balance there. And you, you were comparing experiences in municipalities and this, this university campus is pretty much like a municipality unto yes, it itself. Is. Um, what in a typical day are the kinds of things that happen and the kind of th kinds of things that occupy your officer's time and the kinds of things that maybe those of us who work here and have varying degrees of familiarity or closeness to what you do but probably most of us don't really know what you guys do all day we just we, we sense that you're there which is good but what what happens on a campus like this that involves our police well, that's a great question. And, you know, again, we have community coordinators that are police officers, and they work within the community. They're at the student union. They meet with student groups. They meet with faculty groups, staff council. Um, we even have a, a member of our department that is a member of the staff council. And um, they spend a lot of time really just working closely with those groups so that they 
understand what police do, how we can assist them, how they can be safe, and what they can do to prevent crime because policing isn't something that we can do just by ourselves. Anybody that believes that a police department anywhere can just do it all is, is unfortunately mistaken. It, it's not going to work that way. Yeah. We have to have the assistance from the community um, and you know that's real important. And then we have our other officers that are working the road and what they do on a daily basis is they respond to car accidents, they respond to um, larceny. I send out several tweets about um, unattended iPhones oh, okay. and unattended laptops yeah. because if a person leaves their iPhone anywhere, there's a real good chance it's going to be taken. And um, it is a plague across the country. There, it is the number one stolen item in America today. And, you know, if we could just get folks to understand, you can't leave your iPhone. You know, when they go to the sack or they go to the Belk Gym to play basketball, you can't leave your iPhone on the bleachers. If you do, there's a real good chance it will be taken. Um, we've been real successful in our campaign to try to lower the uh, rate of incident. And um, we're doing better. We're not where I want to be, of course. I don't want any crime. Yeah. But uh, we've done a good job with that, too. I suppose we, we all hope and, and want to believe that there's even no crime on a campus like this. But, but there is, whether mm -hmm. it be an iPhone um, disappearing and falling into the wrong hands or even much more serious on occasion. Um, what, uh, to what degree maybe should we be more cognizant of, of the potential and even the reality that, that more serious things do happen here? I mean, it, uh, Well, one way to look at that, I think, is no matter where someone lives, if they, if they live off campus, let's say, and you were to look at the crime rate in a city like Charlotte, for instance, yeah. and then you compared it to the crime rate on our campus, um, you would see this unbelievable contrast. I mean, it, it's, it's really kind of overwhelming, and we're very fortunate for that. I'll say that. Um, you know, that's the kind of thing that any chief strives for, right? because you want to make sure that you keep crime to a minimum, and at the, you know, your serious crime, you hope that you can keep that away. Um, how, how many of the serious crimes, and if we kind of maybe all have a different perception of what serious is, but how much crime on campus is involving um, perpetrators who are not part of the immediate university community, but who come on to this university campus? Well, I would say that the just about the majority of any serious crime that we've seen on this campus since I've been here have been the the suspects have had no affiliation whatsoever to the university not students never worked yeah. here nothing um, as far as the uh, even even the misdemeanor crime the, the thefts of the iPhones things of that nature you still I, what what I see over and over again those are folks that are not affiliated to our university at all. Yeah. And, um, you know, the way you can prevent that is, one, you, obviously you don't leave your valuables unattended, and two, you have to have a presence with our department. And that's something that I try to do and make sure that our, our community-based officers are working out in the quads and they're working in the areas where they're most seen. And uh, one thing I've seen in the past is that when a person has a criminal intent, if they, if they see a police officer, it generally changes their mind. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they leave, they sure. go away. So it's real important that, you know, our presence is known and seen. And, um, and I think that that does work because we have seen um, some sharp decreases in crime. We, had, we have had an uptick with the surge of the iPhone, um, strictly that though you know the larceny went up a little bit last year um, and it I wish it hadn't but it did and we see that now trending down because we're we're doing things that we hadn't done before we we go to the belt gym for instance and if we find unattended phones we have an officer pick them up we stop the basketball game and mm -hmm. ask whose phones are these yeah. 
you know, yeah. go secure them, please. Sure. And they do that. Yeah. And that works. Uh, we also have a program where we go through our parking lots. And if we, if an officer were to find something of valuable or a value that is sitting in a car unattended, we run the tag, we find out who it is, mm -hmm. and we have them come out and we talk to them mm -hmm. and say, it's not a good idea to have this laptop sitting on the front seat. You know, that's, you're, you know, unfortunately, that's asking for trouble. Yeah. You know, and uh, we've seen a lot of success from that. That really works. Um, I had a chance earlier this year to, to go on a ride along with one of your officers, and one of the things that really hadn't sunk in with me till I did that was the the size of the footprint or the patrol area that your that your team covers. It goes what most of us would think would be pretty well beyond campus as well, right? And is that that's an agreement with yes, it CMPD, is. and you're helping them out on this end of Charlotte? Mm -hmm. That's an extended jurisdiction that we have. And the reason we sought that uh, in collaboration with CMPD is to help them because, you know, most of the apartment complexes that surround the campus are occupied by our students. Yeah. And it's just, it's a, it's a great idea for us to be able to go out and work with those students and assist CMPD with, with issues and, and problems that they encounter at the same time. So that's, uh, that's worked out real well. What are, the, what are the remaining frequent or biggest uh, misperceptions or misconceptions about um, what our police department on campus is here to do and what maybe what it doesn't do for instance I mean and, and this isn't necessarily trivial but do folks assume that you're you're the guys who write the parking tickets or you know that that kind of thing or what we, comes up that we, you... we do we get that quite often yeah you know that that folks think that and um, you know that's a that's a misconception we can write them, but we seldom don't. And the, the truth of the matter is, we don't have time. Um, we're, our officers are very busy. You know, I encourage folks to do ride-alongs, and they'll see, especially in the evening hours. It, it uh, you know, there, you mentioned uh, the, a municipality, and we're much like a small city. You know, we, there's really very little difference. Right. And, uh, you know, there's a lot that goes on, and there's a lot of folks that need assistance, and you know, we're, we're on the run and on the go um, all day and all night as a rule. It's just very busy. It's not, I think sometimes there's probably a misconception that somehow um, at a university that isn't what exists. Mm -hmm. That it's just, there's a difference that the minute that you come onto the campus, somehow the police are different. Mm -hmm. um, and that couldn't be further from the truth. There's no difference. There's no difference from who could come on the campus to do harm and no difference from the response from our officers, uh, just like CMPD. I mean, it's, we're, we're, very, we're very similar in our response. But what I will say is that our campus police officers, there is a much higher expectation of what they're responsible for than a municipal officer in Charlotte. I mean, there just is. There's, there's um, mandates by the federal government. There's mandates by the state for reporting all types of situations and how we do it and when we do it and things of that nature. So there is a, a much higher threshold. Yeah. Once again, our guest on the live wire is uh, Chief Jeff Baker. And if you'd like to join us with your questions, please do so now. And um, a, a, a topic that I, I know has become at any given time, even central to your work, um, is is it's an area that clearly national events have have shaped, and that is you know response to um, situations at schools and at universities, often that involve shooters or the threat of shooters or the threat of somebody who is out to kill a lot of people, and that's something that. Um, is still in, in, in your line of work and all of our lines of work a relatively new thing but it's a huge thing and um, I, I know that you try to um, observe, follow, learn very closely anytime anything like this unfortunately happens and um, a lot of what you're doing from in my assessment at least is you're you're, you're reacting, but along with reacting and preparing, you're being proactive as well. And I guess, you know, one of, one of the more visible things is that you have 
an actual SWAT team on a university campus, which is that still an unusual uh, thing for a university to have? And, and what does that mean? Well, you know, it, it is unusual, um, but it's also important. And, and I, I'm sad to say that. I mean, I don't, I don't say that because I think it's a great thing. I wish, I wish no one had to have a SWAT team. Um, but the bottom line is, is that, you know, we've seen, we've seen these tragedies throughout our country and we want to at least be somewhat prepared. So what we have done is um, I've made sure that um, 12 of our officers are cross-trained in SWAT tactics and techniques and they're experts with weapons and they are then deployed on different squads working day and night including our detectives so that what I've done is made sure that we're supplementing our normal patrol officers with a few officers that are highly trained in case we were and heaven forbid we were ever faced with such a situation but that's when you really want to make sure you have a few people that are trained and, and can respond effectively if need be and uh, that's something that's the whole premise behind why I do what we did um, there are folks that have this Hollywood view of the SWAT team and they think that they're riding around in a van and it's got darkened windows and they're right. waiting for the big one um, nothing could be further from the truth that's not the case and I'll say that that's not the case and probably probably 99% of the police departments in America you don't have that the only full-time SWAT teams I'm familiar with one is uh, Los Angeles mm -hmm. and I think New York and other than those two I'm not really sure that they even exist what are some of the other ways that our force compares with the other um, police departments on the campuses in the UNC system? For instance, size or um, scope, uh, the, the size of our jurisdiction here, the number of officers, um, the, the particular charge to duty, what, what do you cover here that maybe isn't covered on some other campuses? And again, as we often proudly say, we are the urban research university in North Carolina, so that's got to make us a little bit different too. The fact that we're in this urban setting compared to some of the other schools. But what how, what are our differences, similarities, and what do you what do you talk about when you're comparing notes with your colleagues across the UNC system? Well, you know that there's always talk about, of course, more personnel, things of that nature. But also, you know, what type of population? What's the number? You know that you serve. Mm -hmm. And when you look at uh, Charlotte Metro, I mean, there's nothing larger. There's no doubt about that. And, um, you know, we're on one of those cycles where we're growing yeah. because that's something that we face. Uh, we face a, a huge population, unlike um, many of the other campuses, uh, actually unlike any of the other campuses, including the entire uh, Triangle region. You know, we, our population is, is double. Yeah. And, uh, you know, along with that comes all the other big city issues that you have and uh, one of the ways that we're proud in uh, our collaboration with CMPD is that we work closely with them in order to make sure we can try to curtail crime you know and, and do what we can to assist them in uh, the issues that they have outside of our our campus itself too. I've been impressed in in settings in which you bring in a team of your officers for you know a, a group presentation or just you know being around them at events and such I'm not sure what my stereotype be it fair or unfair of a you know university police officer would be but one of the things that impresses me about the folks on your team is you have a diversity of individuals and in backgrounds and just different kinds of people all um, all as your officers um, what what might be so though some of the typical characteristics or backgrounds of the officers who who comes here and wants to be a, a cop on this campus well that's a you know that's a great question it's and it's interesting to me and that you know we have uh, quite a diverse force you know we have folks that come right out of uh, basic law enforcement training and mm -hmm. become new police officers and they they match up with the ages of many of our students we also have very well experienced veteran police officers that have retired and are still in good shape are still wanting to police you know they're still willing to get out 
And that experience combined with uh, younger officers is really perfect. And that's the kind of thing you look for because they do have a lot to offer and the, the youth and the younger officers have a lot to offer as well. So together they, they do a great job with that. Um, we also have uh, uh, some wonderful female officers as well. And uh, in fact, a recent promotion ceremony we had in a process, uh, we promoted three females to sergeant, to the rank of sergeant, which um, in all my years, you know, you usually don't see that, but these uh, particular three females are outstanding and they did wonderful in the process and they were promoted. How many years were you uh, at um, on the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Force? Uh, 28 years. 28 years. And so what drew you to this campus and the idea that you'd want to come to work here? Well, I had always come to campus and as I grew in Charlotte. <clears throat> I liked to come to the events and of course as you know I had a family and then you know we would come out here and we would attend basketball games and um, social events and it was just UNC Charlotte's always just been a, a wonderful place to come to throughout my career and then when I had heard about um, the opportunity to come here to work I was really excited and I thought you know this would be a a great great thing to do. Great and uh, I assume you're going to stick around for a while, and I assume you're going to uh, enjoy watching the, the university. When it sounds like we're back on our trajectory of uh, 30, 35,000 student enrollment by 2020, and that's going to bring with it lots of challenges, but I assume you see challenges opportunity. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, no, I don't plan on going anywhere. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I, I enjoy it, and uh, nothing could be more important than making sure everybody's safe out here and using my experience to make sure that we can make that happen. Maybe just as a final thought, um, you, you talk about getting the people on campus engaged in being a part of policing the university and, and doing their part and, and understanding what you do but understanding what they can do as well. And if there's somebody who's scratching their head saying, well, what does that really mean? What would be the best single thing they could do to get to know you and the department better and to come to you and say, you know, I've always had this question or this question, or I'd like to help, what could I do? Or, you know, doggone it, I don't think you're doing enough. How can I tell you what I think? Well, there's several things, and that's, that's a great question, Stephen. Um, one would be to go up to an officer when you see them and engage them and mm -hmm. talk to them. And, and I know that our officers are going to want to talk about those exactly those same issues. Uh, another thing they could do is go to the student union. We have an officer that spends a lot of time there, uh, Jerry LeCompte, and they could talk to Jerry. We have events that we participate in every month, you know, and um, you, for instance, we have a car show coming up. You know, and a lot of folks, that was a very unconventional thing on a college campus is to have a car show, but it's not on our campus when you think about motorsports and the important role they play in engineering on our campus. And um, you know, you can come there and be involved in that and we have all sorts of uh, demonstrations and, and just things of that nature and it's a, it's a great event. But primarily what I would like to see is if folks want to become involved, call us, come and see us, stop an officer when you see them and talk to them about it. And certainly if you see me because I'm out and around on campus, you know, every day. And uh, I enjoy working with our student. And just ask. All right. We're there. Good. Campus Safety Magazine Director of the Year, Chief Jeff Baker of our own UNC Charlotte Police and Public Safety. And it's uh, been great to have you with us. And um, Segments from this interview will live on in perpetuity on YouTube in the next uh, next few <laughs> days, so we're looking forward to to, uh, to that as well. Thank you uh, for tuning in, putting us on your screens today, and we will be back again next week at the same time with another edition of The Live Wire. Thank you very much.